What we saw in the previous videos was that we can take raw scores in a distribution and convert them to z-scores to make the values we obtain distribution independent. What I mean by distribution independent is that a score of 1 in the z distribution or in the z scale has the same meaning in every distribution. It means one standard deviation above the mean. So the formula we had, going from a raw score to a z-score, really does encapsulate the information about the mean and the information about the standard deviation. It's important to note that a z-score transformation is non-destructive. That is, if I give you a z-score, and I also tell you the mean and standard deviation of the distribution, you can simply go back and find the raw score. For instance, if I tell you a distribution has a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 15, something typical for the IQ distribution, and then I tell you that your z-score is positive 1, you can simply take 100 plus 1 times 15, or get a raw score of 115. Notice we can go right back to a z-score. If I give you your score of 115 and tell you the mean of the distribution is 100 and the standard deviation is 15, well, that's just 115 minus 100, or a value of 15 on the top, divided by 15, which would yield again a z-score of positive 1. Now, z-scores have many uses for us. First, they describe scores in distributions with a single number. Now, that's very important. Z-scores give us a relative score and a distribution-independent score that we can compare among any distribution we want. Second, it allows us to equate and rescale an entire distribution, and this will yield important properties. If we z-score every individual in a distribution, the resulting distribution will have a mean of zero. This is always true. Think about this. If you had a value at the center of the distribution, that is, you scored the mean, your z-score would have to be zero, because the numerator of the z-score formula is your deviation. Your deviation has to be zero if you had the score right at the mean, and so, in any distribution, if you score at the mean, your z-score is zero. Consequently, the mean of any entire distribution that has been z-scored will have a mean of zero. Second, when you rescale an entire distribution, the standard deviation of the resulting distribution, that is, the z-score distribution, will always be one. We can use the same logic as we did for the mean, if you scored one standard deviation above average, that is, your value was one standard deviation above the mean, well, your z-score would have to be 1. Thus, the typical distance in a rescaled distribution is just 1. Finally, we saw that the shape of the distribution once we z-scored it was just the same as the original distribution. When we z-scored the entire distributions of quiz 1 and quiz 2, Nothing about the shape of the distribution changed. You probably saw that quiz 2 was still skewed. Z-scoring or standardizing a distribution does nothing to the shape. Instead, what it does is change the scale. In total, this Z-scoring or this standardization makes scores from non-equivalent distributions immediately comparable. That is, if I talk about you being a Z-score of 1 in the height and weight distributions, distributions that have very different means and standard deviations, that still means the same thing. It means you are one standard deviation above the mean in height and one standard deviation above the mean in weight. So, even though the distributions of height and weight are on entirely different scales, once we've standardized scores, once we've z-scored values, we now have units that we can use in either distribution.